Hello and welcome to another video. This is part two of this DR28 repair service type thing. Um, the main issue is that the lights here are fading in and out with the um, bass, particularly in speech or music, and I'll show you here. Um, but as we've seen before in the past, Lovren doesn't like runners going in behind him. He doesn't really like running as run, running at him. Um, as well, so um, Bardi will, will look to add to his, his goal tally today. The central midfield area, Kevin. So that's the problem, and that all points to either a power supply problem, either a uh, either a capacitor or one of the diodes is breaking down or something in the uh, rectifier bridge, um, or I've got a problem in the amplifier. Hopefully, it's the power supply. So we're going to whip the back off, take the power supply out and fit a new capacitor in and see what that does. If not, that means the whole lot's coming out and I'll have to recap the amp board. Right, here we go. This is the power supply unit here. So the power comes in here. You've got the diode bridge here with some small value capacitors I suspect as acting as RF suppression um, it then comes out and you've got the smoothing filter can thing there and that's what I suspect might be the issue so um, there's four screws to undo and um, this, this bit actually comes out I believe by the look of it that bit might come out that bit looks as if it's been welded in and that's the voltage switch for the various um, world uh, voltages so there's f four screws one two three four and then this which looks as if it comes out but I might have to get a bit forceful with that and um, with, then we can have a look at it when it's out. Right, here's the thing with the four screws out. And the reason this one come out is because it's soldered to the board here. What an idiot I am. Now this is the voltage change thing. And it does, if you twist it, it does come out. But there's something inside. I've just opened it a little bit. And there's some things inside that I'd rather not pull it out all the way. Oops. Excuse me. I don't want to really take this apart too much. So, as a look at the board, you've got this little plug here which doesn't matter, it's quite long. There's a couple of other little connections here which um, I don't know what they're for. Perhaps another model. Um, I don't know. There you've got your, you've got your input for your mains and the switch. There's a little switch inside here for when when you're on mains the mains plug will push that in and disconnect the circuit from the battery supply I guess well not I guess I know the boards marked up here at, um, so I know which way around the new capacitor goes and I've just promptly lost a new capacitor which oh, here it is so I'm going to put a Panasonic in um, I'm going to put a 1000U um, at 50 volts in instead of the 16 volt rated unit that's in there now. And um, they're, they're pretty much the same same size. <laughs> and that's, that's only 16 volts. So in the space of a few years, look how much um, technology has come on. Right, I'm going to get desoldering that um, it's a bit awkward to film because I'm going to have to use two hands and hold this at the same time but uh, we'll have a look when, when I've done it alright there's the repair all done here a good thing to do when you're doing this is just get your magnifying glass out or something Whoa. and just check the board for any dry joints or anything um, that's just something you should do really before you put the board back um, and putting the board back is what I'm going to do now 
um, and then we're going to plug it in and see what happens. If not, it means, mother of god, all that lot's got to come out and I'm going into the amp board which is down there. Ugh. So fingers crossed then. Right, there's the board back in place. I just wanted to um, stick this bit in because I'm an idiot. These two connections I pointed out a minute ago are in fact the terminals for the battery connection. Duh! Um, I can be an idiot at times. So anyway, we've got a new capacitor in. Just to point out that once again that bit slides out. It lifts up and out when the board's free. This bit, you can turn it but it doesn't pull out. This bit is, has been heat welded so it doesn't lift out like that one does. I um, don't know why they've done that. Um, anyway, to remove this board you just need to connect, disconnect the speaker and this um, clippy thing here. That one. And it comes out anyway. So there's no need to remove the power supply board to get this lot out. Right, I'm filming in the dark now, and uh... in the uh, in the Premier League, but I don't think that the Tottenham hierarchy uh, would be wanting to press the uh, the panic button. They'll look to try and take stock of the situation. No, that didn't fix it. Oops. So I've now got to take everything out, um, which is slightly annoying. Never mind. We can just keep on going. Right, I've got the board out. It's um, there's several screws, including one there and one there, which are not easy to spot. Other than that, they're around the outside of the board. You've got some connectors to remove there, and then there's a wire here, and this is as much for my own reference, which connects on to point D, sorry TM 108 there. And then up the top of the board, you've got this wire here with a capacitor on it, which connects to the back of the frequency counter. It screws in. Now after taking the knobs off the front, you can then lift the board out. And it does need to lift up quite a way because there's the shaft for the waveband switch just there. Okay. And there's some capacitors on the underside. This is a really well soldered board and everything. And I'm just going to lay this down to one side here. And what we get left with is this. Now this is all the tuning mechanism. Um, yeah. I'm very wary about taking it out actually because there's lots of springs. I don't know if you can see if I go up a little bit. There's the toothed band here which connects to this cog and it's um it's under some tension from a spring just there. And I'm not sure you can retrieve this whole unit out you know in one go. I think it's I think it's all separate. Hmm. Right, we can have a go and um, see where we end up then. Right, here we are. I've removed the screws for this um, tuning unit here. Um, now, if you know, I've left these two screws in and I've only taken out one, two, three, four, five screws. So. Um, one there, another one here, and a couple up top here, but leave those there because they're not on any standoffs connected to the front of the case. And surprisingly, this comes out as one module with your tuning, tuning scale outlet, which looks as if it's been done on a toilet roll or something. So I'm not going to touch this at all in any way and I'm going to be very careful, sort of plastic gearing, very careful 
about where I store this because I do not want to damage either that or move that really and that gives us access to the amplifier board down there which is going to be the next thing that's going to come out Right, here's the amplifier board out, um, relatively easy to get out. Um, obviously, you've got to take the rubber on off wave band and light um, switch cover things off. Um, I won't call them knobs because they're not. And this is the underside of the amp board. So it goes in like that. Now it's clip tied here and here and there's also an earth tag onto the speaker here so and there's quite a lot of capacitors on there and two light bulbs I believe so you've got a light bulb hanging off here and there should be another one somewhere probably in the back of the meter here maybe not sure but anyway I'm going to check out these capacitors and um, they look at you know just on a cursory look they look absolutely fine actually but um, you just don't know I guess these are the output transistors here really well made set this just the way it's all put together it might be a bit you know tricky to get apart and but it's just the way it all comes and fits in really clever um, this isn't very clever this volume can whether I can get these nuts off and then just get some switch cleaner inside these particular volume control here Hopefully, yeah, I think this might be soldered into place, actually, this shield. Not sure. I need to move the board around and have a look. And I've got the camera in front of me at the moment, so I can't. I've got to be careful I don't bang the meter around too much. There's a purple capacitor there. I bet you that's it. I bet you that's the dodgy one. Anyway, I'm going to have a look at the um, circuit and see if I can find anything. But I would... I don't know. There's something drawing a little bit too much current. And, um, yeah. Right, I'm going to... Uh, oh, look, it's got MPX out on it. I'm going to get investigating. Right, here we are with the board out, and um, I've given it a visual examination, and I can't see any leaky capacitors. There's nothing spurting out the ends, or has spurted out the ends, or anything like, like that. And just for my own reference, this black wire here solders on to the speaker mainframe. There's a little earth tag there, or grounding tag. So as I say, uh, I've examined both sides of the board under a magnifying glass. I can't see any signs of crustiness on the bottoms of the capacitors. Nothing looks bulgy. I'm not one for changing capacitors for the sake of it. But with this board, I can't just change one and then put it all back together and then try it. So I might end up changing a lot, but I don't know why I would. So I'm in a bit of a quandary at the moment. Nothing looks bad visually, as, I, as I've as i said twice now. But um, I need to almost check them all. This looks as if it was built yesterday. And these capacitors are obviously Panasonic. Um, you know, obviously the set's made by Panasonic, so 
they've used their own brand capacitors which I've always rated very highly, never had a problem, in fact they're much the same except in um, physical size as the new ones I've got to go in it mmm well I'm gonna go home and have a cup of tea and scratch my head for a bit and um, wonder where to go next right after about an hour of testing I think I might have found the dodgy one um, I've pulled quite a few, tested quite a few um, in an older Roberts radio or hacker radio you might suspect the one across the speaker to be a bit dry and nasty this one is the one across the speaker it tests as good as a brand new one um, and that's the problem with this radio I don't think it's all that old maybe 25 years old or something everything in it is in pretty good nick um, anyway that said um, there's one capacitor that was hidden under this sort of shield RF screen support so I've had to pull that off and that's held on by twisty tabs at the bottom there which I've had to untwist and lever it off gently because there's a capacitor connected just here maybe across the volume control not 100% yes it is um, and what would you know it's this one here what would you know in circuit and that could be contributing to the scratchiness of the volume control as well that's the first one I've found that is remotely dodgy so I'm going to replace that um, so I've pulled quite a few now and haven't found a single one that doesn't test really good and replace this one and then uh, see how we go goodbye right I've put the new capacitor in it's this one here the negative side of the capacitor is towards the bottom of the board here and just to make sure we're going to check you can see it's got a marking on the board there on the, on the actual PCB so we're going to flip it over and just make sure that we have got it connected to the right side I'm assuming the top of the audio output transformer here is ground we've got the meter on the continu continuity test if I can get it out and we're just going to there we go so we have got it on the right side yep happy with that because it's so easy to put a capacitor in the wrong way around and I particularly want to make sure on this one because the next thing I've got to do is put this shield back and then uh, use those little tw twisty things and twist it down and then the set's going back in because um, as I say I can't find anything else on the board that's bad that is really annoying it just one one capacitor and the one that it is is under that shield oh well all right this is the inside of the set before everything goes back um, I think I've I fixed it I'm not sure <laughs> this is one of those sets you can only test when it's all back together but, um, fingers crossed right so the amp board goes in here so with the there we go and then this bit goes well you've got the tuning next which I'll put somewhere so safe that I can't remember where I put it oh here it is have one last look at that before it goes back brush a little bit of dust off there I don't think one ought to lubricate anything there 
that's got some grease inside, some like green stuff that the manufacturer put in. But, um, I ain't gonna touch it. It's actually got there's some brass actually, so it's plastic on these gears, plastic back with brass. I'm gonna touch this as little as possible. <laughs> Right, so I'm going to screw everything down, make sure nothing's covered in dust, and um, I'll come back. Right, here we are with the radio all back together, and uh, it is one of those sets that you've got to take apart, fix, and put all back together um, just to see if it's working. Um, now, rather annoyingly, um, the FM is on 96 there on the counter and the scale is on about 97 there um, so we need to do an alignment on that which will be the next video um, and just as I was filming this I've had the radio on for about 10-15 minutes and the light bulb popped and I'm just wondering if that dimming in and out with the peak of the volume as at the start of the video was in fact the light bulb signifying the end of its life so um, I've got some more work to do oh bugger <laughs>